Hey guys, welcome back. In this video, I'll be showing you how you can bundle a Flask and React project together for deployment. If you're familiar with my channel, you may have seen another video I made where I showed you how to set up a Flask and React project so that you can communicate between the Flask server and React frontend. However, those videos merely covered a setup process. And in this video, I'll be showing you how you can bundle the two sides of the application. So before we get started, I would like to provide an overview of what we'll be doing so that you are watching the right video. So first and foremost, I have this basic V starter web page and it is currently running on the React server. And what this video will aim to do is to give you a general idea on how you can serve this front end on a Flask backend running Python so that you can deploy an entire web app that handles both the front end and the back end on one server. Now, please do note that you should only watch this video once you've completed developing your Flask and React app. This video is not a video that goes over project setup. And if you'd like to see a project setup, please visit the video linked in the cards on the top right corner of, the, of your screen. And if you have any relative API requests that you are making from your front end to your back end by calling an API endpoint, you may have to alter the endpoint URL if needed, because typically when developing, we're making relative requests to localhost, whereas with production, you may have to set a state within your application where the requests call a production endpoint in a production environment. So now that we have this information out of the way and clarified, let's begin. So in my code here, I have a Flask app that has just one API endpoint that can be accessed with the forward slash. Now you may have multiple API endpoints to handle application functions, and that is totally fine. I just don't have any because this is simply just a demonstration. And this API endpoint is first called when we access the application. So if I access my web app here, you can notice that at this forward slash is where um, this hello world text is being displayed, okay? And our goal is to serve the entire React front end that we have on this one endpoint. Now you may be wondering, what if your React app has multiple pages? Because if we go back to what we have right now, this is just one page, but your application may have multiple pages. And the answer to how we can display those multiple pages is the same. This process will still work because when you create a React app build, the entire web application loads only one HTML page in the browser and dynamically updates its content based on user interactions. So if you have multiple pages, usually libraries like React Router will handle the routing and dynamically update the content and any functions of your site that require API calls will be handled by your other endpoints. So if you were to use Instagram and visit someone's profile, the web page itself is not reloading, but it's rather dynamically updated and the data is displayed based on what's returned from the backend API endpoint. And now that I've provided some clarification, I'm going to stop both of my servers here and we'll show you how to create the production build of your React app. All right, so I've cleared out both of my terminals and inside of the terminal that is open within my client directory right here, I'm going to run npm run build to create a production build of our React application. And upon completion, you should see a new directory titled dist that includes the assets here application, as well as one index.html file that includes everything um, that your application renders, okay? And this is the single page application that I was talking about. It's rendered as one web page. And now that we have this completed, we can begin configuring our backend. So now in the backend, I'm going to write some code and I'll elaborate on what it means in a second. So upon importing Flax, we're also gonna import send from directory. And then within our app instance, we're gonna add two additional parameters. The first of which is going to be static folder. And this is gonna be set to client dist and then static URL path, which is gonna be set to a forward slash. And then we're gonna remove this return hello world to return send from directory app.static folder index.html. 
So first, we've imported send from directory from Flask, and this is used within our API endpoint. And then in the app instance, we've passed in two additional parameters. The first parameter, which is static folder, and this parameter, what it does is that it leads to our client directory containing our front end and accesses the dist folder that contains the production build for our application. And this static URL path includes a slash to access these static files. So the web page within the index file in this dist directory is not dynamic and is located at the root of the dist directory. So that is why we have the static URL path set to just one forward slash. And last but not least, instead of returning hello world like we did previously, we are returning the static folder and the file that we are serving from the static folder. So this send from directory function will take in the static folder that we've passed into our app instance here, which is gonna to point to the disk directory in our front end. And what it will do is it will access this static URL path, which is the forward slash to denote that we are accessing from the top level of the disk directory. And we are returning this index.html file, which contains the single page application that includes the React front end. So under the hood, what this is doing is just going to the client dist, and then this forward slash here comes from the static URL path and is just accessing the index.html file, which comes from this. And our static folder is simply this portion now we can run our application. Now I want to preface this by saying that I do not have the debug set to true parameter within my app.run function as I'm assuming that this is going to be a production environment so I'm trying my best to simulate that here. So what I'll do is in my terminal that has my virtual environment activated and is within my server folder that contains my backend, I'm going to run python3 and then the name of my backend file, which is just main.py. So I'll hit enter, and it says that it's running on localhost 5000. So I'll just click this web page. And upon opening it, you can see that we are no longer returning hello world and are instead returning the React code that we have from the Vt project. So if I refresh this again, just to clarify or confirm, you can notice that the entire React application is now served on the back end, and you can interact with it the same way as you would before, and it works the same way. And also, if we look at our URL path, it is being accessed from this forward slash, which is the route to our endpoint here. All right, so now that we have all of this completed, I wanna recap on what we did. So we first created a build of our React app using npm run dev, and that build was stored within this dist folder here. And then we configured our Flask application to serve the static index HTML file by passing in additional parameters to our app instance, which are static folder and static URL path. And we used the send from directory function that we imported to serve the front end. And the next step would be to, of course, deploy this application. And I have a couple videos on that topic as well. So you can check those out by accessing the cards on the top right corner of your screen. And that just about concludes this video. So if you have any questions or comments, feel free to reach out to me via email or leave them in the comments below. And I'll do my best to respond to you. And if you found this helpful, make sure to leave a like and subscribe to my channel. And with that being said, have a nice day and I'll see you in the next video.